Hi, and welcome to Dear Art Producer. I am your host, Heather Elder, and today is May 19th, 2023, and we are joined by Erica Hinkley, Photo Production Manager at Land's End. She's an accomplished producer and product ch- project manager with over 20 years of global experience in fashion, commercial photography, and video. In her role at Land's End, she manages and directs teams of talented photographers, videographers, stylists, hair and makeup, and digital retouchers to generate work across all media. Savvy, driven, and resourceful, Erica brings the kind of positive energy to problem solving that elevates a project beyond expectations. Hi, Erica. Welcome. Hi, Heather. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you for being here. Rumor has it you are in Wisconsin today. Yes, and it's finally spring here. That's awesome. I was with a friend this week and her son goes to the University of Wisconsin and he's choosing to stay in Wisconsin over the summer. And I, we were just talking about what a blast he's going to have, like lake life and, you know, the summer and all of that stuff. And I just think you live in an amazing part of the world and especially during the summer. So it's beautiful. Uh, it keeps me going throughout the winter knowing that, uh, the spring and summer is the most beautiful time of year. Oh, that's great. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got your start in the industry, this crazy industry that we're in. I'm third generation advertising, uh, not a Nepo baby in the traditional form. I <laughs> started out PAing on commercials uh, and worked my way into still photography for the most part because hours were better. They were smaller crews. You could really kind of dig in and take ownership more so than a really large broadcast production. Mm -hmm. And I just found my niche in managing logistics and details. And I like how every project, every client is something different and a challenge. That is so true. I've always said that about our job. I love that, like, obviously it's so, you know, each job is different. But I also like that, like, if you don't enjoy working with someone or you didn't like the creative or just something like, you know, it didn't work out, you're moving on to the next one afterwards. There's so many positives about having each one be different. Right. And you're always looking forward, trying to build on your experience of, a lot of those shoots that really kind of are in the trenches ones. I think that's a big thing about our industry is the relationships. It's really a people business and getting to know and work with people, see how they work is one of the neatest things, I think. So can you share with us uh, a little bit about what your role as a photo production manager is? Yes. uh, My role at Land's End is I am one of two photo production managers that handles all the on-figure photography for Land's End. Uh, I have a counterpart who manages the off-figure studio in Wisconsin. And currently, most of our on-figure photography is done in studio in New York City or on location. So I manage everything from getting the initial creative or the initial ask and then coordinating with creative samples, styling, and I staff all the shoots. I manage casting for those. Uh, I typically work with an onset producer who handles the logistics on set. That is something I do miss. How many shoots a month do you guys do? We do it by quarter or by season. So typically our main categories, we will shoot once a season for each of our divisions. Comparative to, let's say, advertising, it's more, but That I think is corporate retail in general. Yeah, because that's what I was imagining. I was imagining like corporate retail, like you just jam it on shoot after shoot after shoot with all the new products that are coming in. Right. But because Land's End is global, they've really tried to do 
ask where we go out on one shoot to meet all the needs. Oh, interesting. Okay. Very, very cool. Okay. So what are you known for on your team? Oh, what am I known for on my team? <laughs> uh, probably being detail oriented and checking all the boxes and really pitching in when something comes up. I'm always happy to help. I'm always interested in collaborating with my fellow production managers. We all bring something different to the table and different experiences. And a lot of times you're kind of isolated or a silo and you're not able to collaborate and bounce ideas off of each other. But in my role now, I have a great team that I work with and we all collaborate well together and always are available to help each other. And what do you love about your job? I love that it's different all the time. I love that I can build relationships more. Since I have steady clients, in-house clients, I can really get to know what my creatives like. Oftentimes as a producer, I feel like you're kind of a mind reader trying to see what somebody's (laughs) creative vision is. Yeah. And uh, figuring out the puzzle of how do I make this vision work with the budget I have? How can I get creative in sourcing? And I just really love the puzzle of it and getting to know more of what people's wants are. A lot of times, you know, you have one-off shoots and you work with somebody and then you don't work with them again for years. And I feel like I'm being able to build a better understanding so I can help bring that vision to life. At the beginning of your answer, you talked about the relationships, which I think is such an important part of our job. And I think, I mean, I know I rely on my relationships so much in every aspect of of what I do. I'm I'm guessing you feel the same way if you brought that up. Yes, there are a lot of different personalities, a lot of different creatives. And the best, most accomplished shoots, I think, are the ones where everything moves well with the people on set. It is a people business. Our connections, you never know where somebody's going to be in five years. No, oh, that's so true. <laughs> And everything changes. We've gone through significant changes in our industry in the last 20 years. And we have to figure out how to adapt and adjust. And keeping those connections, I, I've had times where I've connected with somebody I knew 20 years ago. And just having that network and knowing so many different talented people and is really what helps me be successful. I feel. I, yeah. I was just having this conversation with someone the other day, you know, I mean, yes, our industry has just trans- changed so drastically over the last 20 years. And I would say quickly, you know, the last five years of changes have been even more exponentially higher than the, the previous 15 years. I am so for, feel so fortunate and so appreciative of having been in the business for as long as I have so that I was in it during a different time where I feel like I really solidified, started and solidified a lot of those relationships that I rely on today, rely on for today. And I think it would be hard to be in this business start just starting out right now, you know, especially if people are working remotely and how do you meet people? And I think it's just, it's just a different world right now. And I'm I'm just really appreciative of having had those t- that time to you know make those relationships. Let's talk some about the projects you work on. Do all of your projects or any of your projects have motion associated with it, or is it just still? Some do. Most of them are still at the moment, but we've had some motion, but the bulk of you, it is still. And do you work on any projects that don't include photography or any motion work? Do you, you know, work in any other areas? I have some of the art buying areas that I work with, with stock purchasing, usage, influencers, things like that. 
how is that working with influencers with Land's End? My counterpart manages most of that. That's something that is evolving. So how, what about your, in, your clients? I mean, I know they're your internal clients that you have. Do you, what are they asking of you right now? Or, or because you're corporate retail, do you tend to kind of do the same types of shoots over and over again? We do, but we also have an outfitters division that has some national sales clients. So that's a different ball game than our typical. What is an outfitters? Division? Outfitters, uh, we do a lot of B two B promotional products, a lot of uh, school uniforms. Oh, that's interesting. A, that's a big one that I do. School uniforms, outfitters. We have airlines that have collaborated with us. We do a lot of the uniforms for businesses. And that makes total sense, but I hadn't really considered that before. Mm -hmm. So we have some big national accounts that we work with on those. And those are where the actual clients are there on set versus just our in-house. We collaborate our in-house agency with the national client. And are those shoots any different or are they the same sort of thing? They're mostly in studio at the moment, but they can be different because a lot of times those can be on site at the national accounts, maybe at some of their stores or facilities where they will use some of their employees as talent versus hiring models. Oh, interesting. Okay. So are you now, do you work on those shoots with these people? Yes. Okay. Yes. I manage outfitters, kids, home, school uniforms, and outfitters. Oh, gosh. Erica, your plate is full. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I do also do off figure as well, but it's location. Uh, that's typically in location. We've been doing that recently in local to New York. Most of what we shoot is in New York. So let's let's shift a little bit and talk about how people market to you, how they stay connected with you and share work with you. What's the best way to get in touch with you if you're somebody who wants to work for Land's End? Probably the best way is to connect with me directly at Land's End. Uh, I keep track of that better than my personal email because I get a lot of promos through there. So if I can keep it within Land's End, that way I'm easier to share it because when I receive things, I always pass them on to the creatives. And um, are there any messages that kind of rise to the top for you that tend to, you tend to notice more than others? Something quirky, funny, or creative always grabs my eye. That's uh, great. Yes, I, I appreciate the personal emails and the notes, but something that will jump out me is something creative that's different than I've seen and will make me stop and really dig into it and want to understand who that person is. Sorry about that horn noise. I'm 20 floors up and in New York City <laughs> and apparently there's something going on downstairs. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so what about the type of work that your creatives are asking you to find for them now? What are they, what are they gravitating to? They're asking for great talent uh, models. That's always interesting and fun to source different types of talent. When a, a project comes across your desk and it's time for you to search for talent, what's your process? I have longstanding relationships with some people we've worked with that Ellie really likes to work with people they know who are used to their system. But when something comes across, I will say, you know, are you interested in trying somebody new? Here are some options especially if we're doing a remote location shoot. I like looking at what talent might be 
local and trying to see if we can bring in some fresh insight where possible. But ultimately, I'm sourcing, I follow people on Instagram. I keep track of what might be an art news, trends like that, and really enjoy looking through portfolios myself before passing them on. What would you like our listeners to know about this part of the process? I'm going to interject and share that, you know, when you guys used to call in portfolios years mm-hmm. and years ago, I would know that you were interested in my talent, right? I'd be like, oh, right. he, she just called for Andy Anderson. So they, you know, that's cool. And Zen is looking at his work. Well, you know, now I don't, I have no, no idea who's looking at anybody's work anymore unless they call me for an estimate. So you know, so I'm always reminding art producers of that, that there's a whole part of this process that we're just not a part of. So what comes to mind for you, if you're trying to, if you want to kind of share something that you just kind of want to remind people about this, this part of the process? I wish I could make selects myself, but it is oftentimes you know, we all have our favorites or who we think might work great for this, but it's ultimately not my choice. It always gets passed up and they have the final say. But looking through that, I think that's the longstanding relationships. I know a lot of people I know who to go to to find. I know like to go to your website to see if there might be a match of something. I look at bios a lot of photographers and crew to see where they're based. Is there anything that would be helpful for you or that is helpful that you see on websites? I like seeing the bio of where people are. I don't necessarily need to have a picture of their face. So much of our our roles are behind the scenes. So it's not about displaying your personality. It's just kind of knowing what somebody's aesthetic is. And typically you see that through their work. I like knowing the little tidbits of this person has two dogs and a cat. I like (laughs) (laughs) knowing this person's hobby is, you know, shooting botanicals. Knowing something a little more personal allows me to connect. Since I'm a little more removed in the box of, okay, here are the numbers. Here's what we need. Mm -hmm. I like getting something, uh, connecting on a more personal level. And do you find that that sometimes sways art directors and creatives as well? The idea when, you know, you've just sent them 10 links to look at 10 different people. Do you think that sometimes is important to them when you're narrowing it down? Yes. I, I think when... It's also the difference of portfolio presentations versus just getting a book. Mm -hmm. You're able to connect kind of on a personal level, get to know something about that person. It's just a little insight. So switching now to you've found your three photographers say that you are going to think about for this particular upcoming project, the natural next step is probably to have a creative goal. And we all know how important that call is. Do you have any advice for artists who are on creative calls with Land's End and what seems to work and not? Corporate retail, I've learned, I worked many years permalance at JCPenney. And on the corporate retail side, I haven't had as much of a triple bid as I have on advertising. Oh, that's so so nice. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So there is more of an idea, but on that creative call, I hope they ask all the questions because it's harder after the fact to connect with the creatives and ask. Yeah. So once you have the intent, you have their full attention, absolutely take advantage of it. Right. Right. If they're there in the on the call, then yes, let's ask them everything so we can get the most accurate estimate. Everybody has 
a transparent idea of what the expectations are, what the scope of the job are up front. I always want to be very clear and transparent and fair about the scope of the work. What about treatments? Are you asking the photographer or photographers that you did to create treatments for your projects? Uh, no, we really aren't. Uh, but oh my gosh! Can I come work for you, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's the difference in corporate retail versus uh, typically uh, standard advertising. Yes, uh, yes. any one of my it's photographers, but listen, or any commercial photographer out there probably right now is like, oh my gosh, I want to work for Land's End. Like, no <laughs> treatment, single bidding. That's just a dream, Erica. <laughs> I know. I know. It, it's kind of spoiled me. And it's been really nice because you get to really start building the shoot from the get-go. You're on the team. Yeah, really no, hard. I think it's it's uh, it's amazing, and it feels a little bit like how it used to be, right? You choose mm-hmm. you the person that you want, especially if, I guess if they're used to working with you and they've worked with you plenty, right? That makes right. it even easier. But right. even if they're new, I, I think it's truly really exciting. You can put all that time and effort that you'd have to spread out over three photographers into this one photographer, and kind of getting it right. Right, exactly. I think it. Yeah, it's not so much a scatter shot. You're really kind of honed in and focused. And I think it's also a great opportunity for everybody to be on all the same page at the beginning. And so many photographers, what I love is their experience. And I really enjoy hearing that on the creative call. And that's why I like all those questions to be asked. Because then it's a team effort. So. When you're having your creative call, it's at that point you're deciding if you want to work with this person or not, pretty much, assuming they can make the numbers work. Because if you're not triple bidding, right? Or or are you or have you decided before you've had the creative call that it's just going to be one person? If it's somebody new, we probably haven't decided fully, but there's because a lot of times that will be the initial intro, but for the bulk of it, yeah, we've decided this is the way we're going to go. The most I've ever had is a double bid, but I've never had a triple bid here. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm so happy to hear this for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it also, I have a from being freelance and being on my own, I know how much time and effort, all of that estimating treatments, all of that is on spec. Yeah. And that's a lot of people's time and energy that they put into it. And I worked at an agency a while back where they said, anybody who takes that time to do that, you personally call and let them know what the result of the bid. That's really kind. And, and really important. I'm happy to hear that they did that because I was just on a uh, recording with someone else and we were talking about that and how so many times we, if you don't get a job, you'll just get an email that says, so sorry, went in another direction. Thank you. Catch you on the next one. And you're like, mm-hmm. wow. Okay. That is not enough information given all the time that I just gave to you. I need, I need a little bit more of, of why we didn't get the job. Agreed. Agreed. So much goes into all of that and it's all on spec. And I think there needs to be more of a courteous, not necessarily manners, but more of a I know what you're saying. The people in those positions are kind, nice, appreciative people. Mm -hmm. Um, I think our job, their jobs and everyone's really busy, right? So they're just on to the next thing. Now they got to produce the job with that one person. So for them, it's like a quick, like, I'm just letting you know, you didn't get the job. You know, they're kind of crossing it off the list. But I think, I think there needs to be a lot of attention brought to the fact that how much time is being placed and put on in to get these treatments to the places that they are. And that's, it's no longer, you know, it's three people. So two people are not going to get the job. Um, mm-hmm. And it's really hard. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. 
So that's one of the joys of not having to triple bid jobs is not yeah. having to break somebody's heart. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. I'm sure people are listening and thinking, I am 100% going to add Erica to my email list. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I I love getting emails, especially, yeah, I love seeing everybody's work. And I wish I had more shoots and projects to have everybody do them. Well, but, what about the budgets? Are you given budgets from your internal teams? Yes, I'm given budgets. And then we go from there. But typically, the budget is associated with if it's going to be in studio or on location. That's already dictated. But from there is where I connect with the creatives and ask what they're wanting for that. Because I just get a lump budget up front and it includes everything. And do you share that with the person you're bidding with or no? Well, <laughs> typically for what we're bidding... I've had some photographers go, okay, what exactly are we working with? And I'm like, I haven't built the shoot yet, so I don't know what anything's yeah. going to cost. Based on the creative, you know, based on the ask, what are your initial thoughts? And I might have to cut elsewhere. It, it's all this balancing act where... Because your budget know, includes more than just photography. So you, you got to figure out what portion of the photography, but bu that budget will go to photography, what goes to post, what goes to talent, what goes to whatever all your travel are. what goes to locations. Exactly. So when, if I can figure out the photography portion up front, that's the best because then I can figure out how to make everything else happen. And do you work with cost consultants at all or no? No. Okay, well, let's talk about what you think is what your kind of predictions are for the rest of the year. Do you find, feel like it's going to be a busy rest of the year or do you think things are going to kind of stay the same? We're about to go into holiday, so I'm not sure. I imagine that's going to get pretty busy midsummer, and then we roll over to the next fiscal year with new budgets. So I'm anxious to see how that works. But I think it's going to be pretty busy. I'm hopeful <laughs> that uh, everything keeps on trucking. I'm curious to see how AI affects our industry. I know there's a lot of talk around that right now. Yeah, and that was my next question to you. Is, is, has that been permeating into your creative conversations? And what are, what are people talking about? I'm talking more from, it, it really hasn't hit my corporate entity, but I, there's been discussion with me and some of the other people in our industry I've worked with. I am interested to see how that affects everything because right now, AI, I can tell personally, most of what is AI art, just because of the color schemes are so vibrant, more like technicolor, pastel, saturated. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that is going to shift, if that technology is going to look more natural, more mm -hmm. lifestyle. It's very yeah. stylized at the moment. Mm -hmm. It does feel very stylized. It's interesting. I do have a few artists in on our roster who are using it to kind of help them create their vision for mm -hmm. projects, which has been really interesting because they're showing up on creative calls um, with some cool AI generated imagery that is relevant to the project on hand. And it kind of helps them speak a little bit more about what they're imagining for the project. And then they're kind of putting that into their treatments and things like that. So that that part of it has been kind of cool to watch evolve. The idea that, you know, images can be created and used commercially. Ours. It's a whole hornet's nest of, mm -hmm. of questions there. <laughs> and, it, you know, definitely makes me nervous. But I think, I, I think I'm also nervous about 
how AI is affecting the advertising industry in general, not just imagery, but, you know, all of Copy. it. Copy. And I, and I don't, it, it's just interesting. And we're in yet another kind of big change in our, right. you know, in our industry. So I'm interested in it, like you said, as a tool for treatments, for expressing what somebody's abilities or their vision is. I just want to make sure we keep it where companies aren't just generating art and using it. Yeah, we'll see. I feel like everything's happening so quickly, right? It's not like, oh, we'll see years from now, we'll get there. It's not years from now. It's like tomorrow or months, right. weeks from now. So yeah, it's very, the more people who use it, the, the smarter and more involved it gets. Yeah, I, I'm really interested to see what the usage discussions around it Me are. Me too. Absolutely, me too. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. And I think a lot of people are holding off on actually kind of being able to use it until that part of it gets figured out. Right, right. Yeah. Because I think that's a very slippery slope. Yep, I agree with you. I agree. Okay, well, we're kind of winding down and I always ask the same two questions of people when we're done. What is your favorite thing to do on Sunday? And if you are a producer, what would you be? Oh, favorite thing to do on a Sunday is be outside in my garden and hang out with my dog and cook. Just be a homebody uh, outside. And if I weren't a producer, I'd, I'd love to be an old woman who lives by the sea and has a life. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that. Oh, I love that. Well, I, you are one of the, you are very close to being what the 100th episode. I think you, I don't know. I think maybe this is 97 or 98 or something. So after 100, I'm going to change up those two questions. And I have to say, after asking almost a hundred people, those two questions, no one has ever said that. So I love that answer. <laughs> oh, well. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on here with me today. I really appreciate it. It's wonderful to get to know you and hear about the, the ins and outs of at Land's End. And I'm just thrilled that you were on the show today. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much, Heather. It's been such a delight and I'm truly honored that you wanted to speak with me. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too.